morning, everyone. Can you hear me okay? Yeah. Good enough. <clears throat> so, in the gospel today, <clears throat> excuse me, <clears throat> in the gospel today, John, we have two figures that are being talked about. <clears throat> John the Baptist and Jesus. John the Baptist came effectively eating locusts and honey, and they said he said, assumed he was doing bad things. Jesus comes and doing the exact opposite of John the Baptist, and they still assume he's doing bad things. Anyone here ever had that situation where you're actually minding your own business, doing fine, just playing with your toys or something, and then a parent or a teacher maybe comes in and assumes just the worst? Anyone? Yeah, a couple of times. I know when I was young, I got in trouble a lot. I was perfect angel all the time, I swear. But that's what happens to Christ today in the gospel. He's going about doing the work of the Father, and the people of the time assume he's doing bad things. They call him all sorts of names, trying to move him away from his mission and his goals. The reason I bring this up is because it's a habit, a human habit, an all-too-human habit to assume the bad. When a friend is having a bad day and is being angry or being rude, we, we immediately think, oh, they're a bad person, we need to stay away from them. I can't believe they would do that or say that. But that's us assuming the bad of them. The gospel today is a call to not assume the bad, but to instead assume the good. So we assume that if our friend is, friend is acting out, well, they're not a bad person. Maybe they're having a bad day or a bad week. Or if your teacher is in a bad mood. Any teachers in a bad mood today? Of course not. You're all, you're all perfect angels. <laughs> if our teacher is in a bad mood, Maybe they're just in a bad mood, and they're just not feeling it today, and they're having an off day, and that's okay. We assume the good. We assume not that they're a bad teacher, not that they're being mean and rude or disrespectful, but they're just having an off day, and that's okay. Teachers, same with your students. Sometimes they're just having off days, and that's okay. We assume that it's just an off day, not that they're a bad student, not that they're a bad kid, but they're having an off day, and that's okay. We, make, we give them that room and that space. Because it's important that we start to assume the good. And so this applies for all aspects of the spiritual life, not just in broader contexts like in school and stuff like that. But in all aspects, it's important that we start to assume the good of people. So if somebody makes a decision in our business or our work or our community and we disagree with it, it doesn't mean they're a bad person. It just means they made a decision. And so instead of assuming that they're like, they, they have evil motives and intentions, it's important that we assume the good. That we assume, oh, you know, Father Ricky made this decision because X, Y, and Z. Maybe he saw a real reason for it. It's important that we assume the good in our communities, in our, in our classes, in our, just in our regular everyday lives, even in the family, in the home. St. Thomas Aquinas, and this is not for the kids, but it's important. St. Thomas Aquinas tells us that the very basic human instinct is not to choose the bad. Like, like all the sin out there is never chosen because it's bad, because it's evil. There's an upside down understanding. But even in the, the bad decisions and the bad choices that people make, there's always a desire for what they assume is the good. They may misconstrue what the good is, but they still choose what they think or misbelieve to be the good. That's hard for a lot of us to understand and accept, but that's where these two things meet. Assuming the good and assuming that their intentions aren't evil. They may have a different good in mind than what is actually good for the common good, but most people, even when they're doing what we conceive of as bad, they have, they're choosing what they understand to be good. It doesn't make their decisions good or their actions good. But it helps us to understand a little bit more that you know, like people don't actively choose the bad. 
Anyways, back to the kids. So I was talking about people having a bad day. Anyone having a bad day today? Yeah, it's okay. Some of us do, and that's fine. Do you know what we do when we start to recognize that somebody is having a bad day? Any idea? Uh, so like a little like, like, like random, uh, What do you do though? You can say say something for that to them, sure, but there's something else on the especially in a church context. That we, yes. We pray for them, right? So if we're having a bad day, our community is there to pray for us. If we notice somebody's having a bad day, it's important that we pray for them. We pray for their good, we pray for their healing, their understanding. They, we pray that they just have a better day. That's our obligation. And if we are having a bad day, just know that it's okay. We do our best, we talk to God, tell him how terrible of a day it is, and then more often than not, he kind of calms us down and lets us handle it gracefully. God bless you.